Good morning to one and all. I hope you and your family members are keeping safe amongst this pandemic. Welcome to our webinar for today on the new feature release of Autodesk Revit 2022. Myself, Anirban Bharacharji, and I am the Techno Commercial Head of Virtual Building Studio. Organizing this webinar, take the privilege to have distinguished panelists and guests with me today to describe about the features that have been added in the new release of Autodesk Revit 2022 and how it will enhance and help us in the project execution. Post this webinar, we have a feature in our platform that will help us take up questions and our distinguished panelists will be privileged to answer those questions. Virtual Building Studio organizing this webinar specializes in BIM and digital transformation, helping general contractors, architects and engineers in North America and across the globe to add value in the AEC industry from concept design to facilities management. We cater our customers in the entire life cycle of BIM and project management in the phase of BIT, design and build. I will now take the opportunity to introduce our speakers one by one and distinguished panelists today. Ankit Kansara is the founder and CEO of Virtual Building Studio, a gold medalist architect and a passionate construction evangelist. He has extensively worked in US, India, Singapore and UK, where he has been instrumental in adding value to the prestigious projects in terms of engineering, procurement and construction. He believes in helping general contractors, architects and engineers by implementing BIM technology to achieve quality output and timely deliverables. He understands how rewarding the design and construction process can be when technology and cultures envisage each other. My next speaker is Mr. Paul. Paul is the author of many Revit books and video titles on the LinkedIn learning platform and an independent consultant serving architectural firms worldwide. Paul is also a widely recognized speaker in areas of Revit usage, architecture and reality affairs. Paul has authored books and training video modules where users can learn Revit expertise. Our next speaker is Miss Kimberly. From being fascinated by drafting styles and systems of the times before AutoCAD, Kimberly has grown as a drafting and software expert along with Autodesk developments. Her skills and fascination for architectural tools have landed her a content manager at AUGI before, which led her into the Autodesk community. Now she is the Autodesk Revit community manager, known famously for bouncing around Revit ideas. Kimberly believes in architectural and civil engineering as contributing positively to our environment and leaving a legacy in sustainability for the upcoming generations. The sequence of this webinar will be driven as Mr. Ankit will be starting, followed by Mr. Paul, and then Kimberly will be taking over, followed by me. So also you can register your questions on the left side of the Zoho panel interface. Our speakers will be happy to answer the questions post uh, uh, the webinar is completed. So I would request Mr. Ankit Kamsara to start the presentation. Good morning and uh, good evening everyone in the respective time zone. Nice to see you all here and I'm seeing a lot of people are joining but due to time constraint we have to start. So here is the presentation flow. We will start with the modeling, changes of the modeling, then visibility and graphic, sheet work, schedule, import export, and dynamo. So let's start with the changes, improvement in rebar modeling. Whenever I was in discussion with anybody, when, when, when I sit with architects and engineers, always the Structural engineers and detailers complains about Revit that rebar detailing features are not really well and easy to use. And I think this time Autodesk has done a well done job. I mean they have they have tremendously added a lot of new features which improves efficiency. Start with the rebar with size. In this Revit 2022, rebar detailers can model bars using the real diameters including the reefs, helping them to avoid classes in concrete elements containing many large diameter bars. Rebar constraints distances to the concrete, core, 
bar geometry and segment lens are now computed using model bar diameter parameter which is which is highlighted there in the slide so you can refer the slide while i'm speaking and this new feature improves users efficiency in modeling accurate concrete reinforcement in this next slide move rebar instead i mean this is the normal complaint from everyone that i cannot change couple of rebars in the set and i think in revit 2022 this improves well rebar modeling and detailing for structural engineers and detailers is making it easier for you to move from disconnected workflow to bim enabling you to model and detail faster and accurately you can now move or remove individual bar in rebar sets or area and path reinforcement systems to avoid clashes with other rebars and openings there is no need to split a set into a multiple set now or to remove path area reinforcement system this new feature will significantly improve your efficiency and productivity in modeling accurate reinforcement cast in place and precast reinforcement structures rebar placement in revit 2022 you can place rebar of exact dimension aligned to any reference in the project whatever the reference is you can align to any reference in the project in just two clicks it's very easy to use it saves your number of steps now and this is game changer huge feature it improves productivity for all the detailers rebar with custom bend and this is i love these features a lot in 2022 you can assign shape code to custom bend free from bars that enabling you to provide better fabrication instruction for example now you can now uh, distinguish between bars to be bent on site versus in the shop you can manually assign desired set to bars as their local fabrication convention in this rebar setting even this this has changed a lot uh, setting used during rebar placement are now maintained for the duration of the revit session earlier it was very different so whenever you change some setting again and again and you have to do that setting into that particular set now there is no longer need to reapply rebar setting to each set options layout this improves your productivity by reducing time managed to change rebar setting each time infrastructure workflow improvement in, in 2021 infrastructure category was added with 26 new model categories and subcategories this time they have added few more things like alignment station enhancement you can prefix and suffix alignment station also you can add flip control to the alignment station revit api integration is done very well this time so yeah now i will request mr paul to uh, take the presentation ahead from here that's all just uh, once one, one line i mean absolutely you know so this time the work closing infrastructure are very smooth and you can now integrate models from civil 3d infrawalks to revit beam and you can now you know import your pier or column and you can start uh, rebar detailing in revit absolutely thanks now handing over to paul all right thank you so uh let's start with the uh, big new modeling feature for architecture well, mostly architecture tapered walls uh so in 2021 we had slanted walls uh this was a single angle angular parameter which would allow you to slope the wall uh either positive or negative uh with a tapered wall you actually get two angles and so um the walls can actually uh well taper right so and they don't have to go in opposite directions they can go kind of together or uh, form a variety of different shapes. And uh, a really neat thing about this is it can be applied at both type and instance level. So initially you put these settings in the type properties of the wall, but, uh, and I think we have a picture of this maybe on the, oh no, it's right there uh, in the lower right-hand corner. 
um, you could see the circled area that you can actually check a box to override the type parameters and then these will be applied um, uh, instance by instance. So you don't need to create a new type just to, uh, to be able to make um, uh, different angular settings. Um, so uh, let's go next. Um, we also have um, control over where the angles are measured from. So you can either measure at the top or the base or um, the very bottom of the wall. And when doing that, of course, that will have a different impact on how the taper occurs because of the way the angles work and uh, the thicknesses. You can also end up with invalid uh, angles if you create a situation where it uh, forces the layers to crash into each other. So you do have to be a little careful uh, when applying these settings. All right, so let's move on to the next feature, which is load Autodesk family. If we could go to the next slide, please. So this was a technology preview in the previous release. Um, and that just meant that it was something they were trying out, but now it's become an official feature. Um, and it also has gotten a few enhancements here in 2022. What I like most about this feature is if you're using any of the out of the box content, uh, you get these nice preview window here where you see the previews a little bit nicer than you would in Windows Explorer. But more importantly, the Windows Explorer interface of previous uh, releases didn't have any kind of search capability. Well, now you can search for uh, families that you want to load. So you're not, um, uh, you don't have to know exactly what folder uh, to look in. You still have the folders over on the far left if you look at the screenshot there, but you can search at the top as well, which is really handy. Now, um, the other really nice feature of that is that you don't have to have all the content installed. You can uh, search across content for any of the languages and download and, um, and load a, a family on the fly. All right, so here we're looking at um, the ability to uh, control what happens when you have multiple values selected. So previously what would happen is if I selected two objects that had a different parameter, it would just blank out the field and you wouldn't see anything at all. And um, that is maybe a little bit uh, confusing for an end user because they might mistake that for being an empty value. And then if you type in a value, it would change all those objects, which could potentially be dangerous. So now it's actually gonna say varies with the little um, brackets around it. And uh, on the next slide, uh, if you don't like it to say varies, if you'd rather put in something else there, like, uh, I don't know, multiple or you know whatever other option you wanna type in, you can actually customize what that multiple value says. And this applies across everything, uh, properties palette, uh, schedules, uh, everywhere you see in Revit tags, um, you're gonna have this varies indication. All right, so that takes us to uh, some new categories. So um, uh, Ankit mentioned some of the new categories for uh, structural modeling. Well, we have a variety of new categories now for general modeling. So this includes things like uh, food service equipment, which uh, I'm particularly pleased with because I've done some work for some food service contractors and we've always had to put their stuff in other categories that weren't really appropriate. We've got medical equipment, fire protection equipment, audio visual devices. There's a, probably about two dozen new categories that allow for generic modeling now. So this is gonna make it easier for you to uh, manage where your custom components go for scheduling, for modeling, for visibility graphics. So uh, overall, uh, generally a nice new enhancement there. All right, so moving on to some visibility uh, settings here. Uh, first up is uh, core, core layers in the walls. So um, this I think is most useful for uh, folks like structural engineers who are not really interested in what the finished layers are. So uh, you can see on the left, there's visibility graphics screenshot where you can just uncheck the display of the core, uh, sorry, un uncheck the display of the non-core layers and it will look like it does on the far right there. Um, so it removes all of the finished layers and you're only seeing the core layers. Now, if you have multiple layers in your core, then those multiple layers will display. Um, and this is a plan only graphic. So um, this just helps you, you know, get right to where the core layers are. All right, so uh, next is 3D grids. So uh, last release, maybe two, three releases ago, I forget exactly when, but we got uh, layer or levels displayed in 3D, well now we can see grids in 3D. So they're gonna show up as planes, very similar to how levels did. The one big difference though with these is you're gonna have to tell it which level you wanna show the grid indicators. So they're gonna still uh, show the graphics parallel, uh, 
the annotation rather, they're going to still show that uh, parallel to the ground. And you can see on the far left there, the little check boxes where you can tell it what levels you want to indicate that. So you can actually check more than one if you want to. So it's really a two-step process. There's a visibility graphics component where you go in and turn on um, 3D grids uh, on the um, annotation tab, but there's also a properties palette component where you have to check the edit box there and check the boxes where you wanna see the uh, annotation appear. All right, so next is resizable dialogues. And there's a few different uh, pictures here. My favorite one is right in the middle of the list there, wall sweeps. I can't tell you how many times I've been creating wall sweeps and there's about 10 columns across that dialogue and they're all squished together um, and it's really tough to read. So now you can just stretch out these dialogues and make them wider. So here we're showing a few examples of, you know, transfer project standards and purge unused, but all of those that you see listed on the right are now resizable. So. Uh, welcome change there. So uh, we're getting to some of my favorites now. Uh, filters is um, gotten a few new enhancements. Now this has been being enhanced over the last couple of years. Um, so this is just a continuing in that uh, March. So if you're using an older version of Revit, you may not even have the enable filter checkbox, which was added one or two releases ago. But now what we can do, as you can see very clearly in the screenshot is, we can actually select multiple filters together with your control or shift key. And then once you've got them selected, you can move them as a group, you know, with the up and down buttons, you can turn them on and off with the visibility buttons uh, or the enable and disable. You can even set the override property. So if that selected group, if you wanted to change them all to red or change the line type all to dashed, you don't have to do them one filter at a time. So in a screenshot like this, where you have lots of filters applied to a view, it's gonna be really handy to be able to manage them this way. It's such a simple change, but it's huge, right? It's a big, big uh, productivity boost if you do a lot of work with uh, filters. Now, um, a little bit later on, Kimberly's gonna talk about the uh, phasing uh, properties, but that is by far one of my favorites in filters where you can now put phasing parameters in the filters dialog as well. So here um, is the, uh, the last visibility uh, settings. This is, um, new color schemes for the uh, uh, room schemes for uh, a color fill pattern, uh, color fill schemes. So when you apply color fill to uh, floor plans, uh, you can see that it's a softer, more pastel color scheme that's gonna be added by default. Now, uh, I should mention that this is only gonna occur for new, uh, newly created um, color fills. So if you've got an existing file that you upgrade from a previous release, it's still gonna use the same color scheme that you had previously. So it's not gonna change all your colors if you've, uh, if you've customized those. But if you do generate a new scheme from 2022 forward, uh, then it will use the new um, uh, color scheme from that point on. And then of course, it's uh, still something that you can customize uh, should you desire to do that. And I think that is the, uh, yeah, that is my collection. And Collection. Turn over to you. Turn over to you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. So I'd like uh, to uh, welcome Kimberly in this discussion. So Kimberly, you can please take this discussion ahead. Okay, great. Paul, well, you are a tough act to follow. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're starting off with revision numbers. Um, this has been one that's been highly requested on the Revit Ideas. Uh, you are now able to customize your revision number sequence. And so you can add alphanumeric characters. You can uh, basically create different uh, revision sets. And if you go to the next slide, uh, you can see that this also meets the ISO 19650 uh, standard. And so I know for our uh, our European and Asian friends that this is uh, very important to them as well. And so, uh, you know, you can add prefixes or suffixes to those. And then we move on to shared parameters in key schedules. Now, something to note uh, with this is that, uh, first of all, this was another Revit idea, but Specifically, these are instance parameters. So shared instance parameters are now available as fields for key schedules, okay? And these are different from our typical quantity schedules. Uh, the parameters can control family geometry in multiple families in a specific category. Um, if you think door hardware, you can apply uh, key schedules to control your door, door hardware over multiple door families. Okay, so next slide. And then we have uh, the multi-category tag. We have now added additional categories. In fact, I think almost all categories can now be uh, tagged with a multi-category tag. 
again, another uh, Revit idea. We were very excited. We had about half of the new features in Revit 2022 come from the Revit ideas. Just a little side note there. Uh, tag improvements, we've added rotated tags. So now we have the ability to actually control the angle. You can see up on the upper left corner uh, that you can add a, an angle uh, to your tags. I should note that uh, it's already come up that when you have a structural framing tag, you actually need to edit the structural framing tag family and uncheck the box that says rotate with component. Otherwise your angle um, of rotation is going to be grayed out uh, in your project. So make sure that you check that if you're using structural framing tags. Uh, we've also added the ability to add multiple leaders to tags. Um, we've already had a request to add curved leaders. So we'll see if that comes up uh, in the future. And then we also have the ability to tag curtain wall mullions. Um, again, another uh, popular request, <laughs> getting a thumbs up from Paul. Okay, so for dimensions, we now have the ability to add prefixes and suffixes as type parameters. Okay, so you don't have to go through every single dimension to add any of the prefix and suffix. You can create a new uh, dimension family type and add those as the type parameters. Okay, spot slopes and spot elevations on ramps. This has been, again, another um, big request to be able to just add those spot elevations and slopes uh, right on the ramp. And so you can also customize the annotation to match whatever your documentation standards might be. And this is what uh, Paul was talking about earlier, our phase parameters in our view filters. Uh, we now have the ability to filter by the phase created and the phase demolished. And then uh, you can also change the visibility and graphics of elements based on these parameters instead of using phase filters. Okay, so make sure life a little bit easier. Um, Preserving callouts. So if for whatever reason you need to delete a floor plan uh, that has callouts on it, you now get the option to retain the callout views and make them independent. And um, the callout will actually be visible in intersecting views. And this is important. It has to be set uh, when you create the callout. So uh, if you see on the left side where it says show in intersecting views, you want to make sure that that's turned on uh, so that the callout will show in any intersecting views, elevations and sections and so forth. Okay, and just some miscellaneous uh, MEP improvements, uh, vertical pipe tags, nested families, and pinned elements, uh, really just some uh, general fixes and um, improvements there. Okay, so on the schedules. Okay. So working with um, the work set filter, we now have this ability to filter our schedules by work set. We can use the work set parameter in our schedules, uh, in sheet lists and so forth, and um, be able to use that as yet another way to filter uh, schedules. And this is probably my favorite feature is the ske split schedule across the sheet. I don't know how many times, uh, you know, I've done room schedules or door schedules that are just massive. You now have the ability to um, maintain the integrity of those schedules, but break them across the sheets. They are fully, you can modify them, you can shorten them, you can lengthen them, you can put them back together if you need to. And, uh, you know, really have more flexibility. Yes, big thumbs up, Paul. Uh, more flexibility with being able to put those schedules onto multiple sheets. My favorite, for sure, besides PDF export. <laughs> and then uh, finally, some, some parameter improvements. I think this is my last one, but we have the ability now when we're creating a schedule to search for specific parameters by name. Uh, we can filter parameters by their properties. So if there's a uh, specific parameter uh, type that we're looking for, we can filter those out, and then we can use uh, information and tooltips uh, to be able to identify the correct parameters that we need to work with in those schedules. And I believe that does it for me. Thanks so much, Kimberly, uh, for your inputs. I believe it has added tremendous value to all of our viewers. 
now i will take it forward from the import export feature so uh, the import in starting with the import export feature the first is the pdf export feature so now we have an inbuilt pdf exporter in terms of the exporting the revit to be to the pdf instead previously we used to have a third party then we had to do the pdf export but now the pdf exporter allows to export 2d pdf documents from revit views or sheets then we uh, this is also a feature that is the generate the pdf file names as well automatically this can be helpful to create the sheets and the short drawings automatically from the project using the shared parameters so by the help of the shared parameters the text parameters can be aligned by the respective number of sheets that are exported exporting schedule to dot csv is one of the great features that has been added in revit 2022 because previously when the export was given it was in a dot txt file that is a text file and from the text file we had to copy that into the excel file but now revit 2022 thankfully has given this feature to export it directly to the xls format or the csv format this is another very good feature uh, from a Rhino layering standpoint that 3DM files can now be linked as a CAD format with Rhino layers as you can see on the screen. Uh, talking of the AXM file extension that the AXM files can also be linked as a CAD format with materials, layers and grouping definitions as has been shown on the screen. Autodesk Inventor assemblies can be linked as Revit models. So now this is also a very good added feature that has been added in Revit 2022. We can now open the cloud model as well from the file menu. Previously, we used to have that we used to give the user ID and password from the Autodesk Revit 360 and then used to connect with the Revit format. But now this button has already been given in the open tab. In terms of the 2D shared views, the shared 2D views and sheets of your Revit projects with the other stakeholders. So we can share this with the other Revit stakeholders as well. The view comment and the markup of the result in a web browser and the view and response to comment and markups directly in the Revit. So this is a feature, this is a resembling feature that many of us have saw, have seen in the Bluebeam. So the marking of the PDFs or the marking and commenting on the PDF. So this is a feature that Revit 2022 has given. Revit to form LT. So the line type that is the translate Revit geometry into the form LT using the new 3D sketch tool. Send the formality geometry into Revit preserving materials and layers and control formality layers via the visibility graphics. So this is a very good feature that has been added in Revit 2022. Now coming to the Dynamo and the APIs. So 67 commonly requested nodes have been added in this uh, delivery of the Revit 2022, this edition. And the categories that has been listed on a very high level are the annotation nodes, sheet nodes and the view nodes. For the API developers, for the programmers who are using Revit on a very high scale, the sketch APIs, the viewport label on sheet APIs, color fill APIs, cloud model initiate and link APIs, APIs for mapping cloud model with Autodesk Docs, URLs, and point cloud APIs. So these are a very good integration to the current model of Revit 2022. So now with this, we have come uh, to the end of our webinar session. So now I will be requesting uh, Paul and Kimberly to take up some of the questions which have come on the palette from our respective users so that we can answer a couple of questions and we can then go on the vote of thanks on the end of this webinar. Well, I'll, uh, I'll start here. There's one that's in there right now that I don't, no, I, I wanted to just throw to the whole group here. Um, it says the one that you showed with the custom PDF naming with multiple parameters, can we do the same for CAD export? I don't think so, but maybe somebody else has tried that. I haven't checked that yet. Um, do you guys know if the naming that you showed for PDF will work for CAD export? I don't think it does. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I was, uh, I was, I don't recall that that being in there, but um, I don't have Revit fired up right now. My apologies. I could test it right now. <laughs> uh, there's one about ISO. Uh, take that. Yeah. Okay. So with regards to the ISO 19650 numbering tag, is there a way to show only the drawing number on a section head slash call out, et cetera, rather than all individual nine fields? I'm assuming you're... Um, 
referring to the label of a section head or callout. And so that's a that's a good question. Um, with the ISO 19650 refers to revisions. So I'm not sure if you're showing a revision in the section head. Is that how you're reading this, Paul? Yeah, I, um, I mean, if- I think the sheet number would show in the revision. Yeah. If, so if you're adding a-, a Right, I mean, I think if they're separate yeah. <laughs> fields, um, we might be able yeah. to get the tag to, uh, to point to each field individually, but- um, the revision, I mean, because if you're doing a revision tag, I mean, there's no reason why I guess you couldn't point to a different field than the revision number, which is what the standard tag does. So theoretically, it's possible, but I, I would have to see it more specifically to know for sure. Right. Um, right. So splitting walls, okay. uh, when splitting a wall that has paint applied, it still loses the second wall paint color, maintaining the paint in only one of the two new partition walls. I don't understand that question. Um, it lo still loses. I mean, if you split the wall. Okay, so when you, yeah. When you split a wall that was already painted, it loses oh, it's already painted. the paint on the yeah. second part. Okay. Yes. All right, I wasn't following that. I was thinking, yeah, sure. You could have two different paints. Okay, so right. how to maintain the existing paint. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, take yeah. that back to the team, would you? Great question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You guys are giving us hard ones here. Um, Definitely. <laughs> Stump the chump. Here we go. <laughs> uh, isometric views, I don't believe so. If they mean like the standard flat kind of uh, 30, 60 view, I don't think we have that in Revit. Um, it's going to be a live 3D view. It's not going to be a kind of a, mm -hmm. uh, a two and a half D uh, ISO view. Um, when uh, the new schedule revision is possible to begin at revision number zero. Can you begin at revision zero? I think you can. I think you I can think just you set can. which number you want to start at. I I'm going to fire up Revit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Splitting walls with gap. Uh, is there a question there? I think that was removed or hidden or something. Um, but, uh, I mean, you can use the regular. Sp I, I got to be honest. I never use. Okay. I think that goes back to the paint question. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Well, because yeah, there I is a so. split with gap tool um, where it kind of does this mm -hmm. weird little thing where it, you know, it, it creates a segment that's uh, a certain size and then locks it. Um, and I think it has to do with like prefabricated construction or something. I, I personally don't use it. I just use the regular split tool. But um, and then you have more control because you can set the gap bigger than one inch or 25 millimeters, whatever it uh, uh, max out, maxes out at. So um mm -hmm. Not sure if exactly that's what they meant there, but uh, let's see. Um, yeah. uh, Paul, I just want to add one thing here that the uh, feature that has been given in Revit 2022 in terms of bill of quantity, that is the .csv export file. So I believe that previously when we used to take it in the TXT format, the alignment of the rows and columns when we used to paste in the Excel was very different. Yeah, the orientation was not good. But I believe in the direct export of the CSV, will the rows and columns be oriented properly and sequentially? I believe they will. We're just going to open it right in Excel. It's going to open right up in exactly the format that it exported in. So yeah, I don't think there's going to be any uh, formatting issue. I don't think it's going to take the headers and stuff like that. Um, or you can check that. You can tell it whether you want to include the headers or not. But um, uh, but it should be a nicer experience when it comes in, yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, it's a more direct uh, talk from it. I want to tell all, all uh, viewers that, you know, if you want any new feature in the next version, we have a Kimberly email ID. You can shoot her an email and, and this directly goes to Autodesk. Paul, Paul, which one is the new feature that you would like to see in the next version oh, of Revit 2023? Um, I, I do a lot of family content and there, I've got some family wishes that I've had for a long time. And I think probably the one that bubbles to the top for me is a list. So I would love to be able to build a list of items. You know, let's just call it, uh, you know, um, uh, up, down, left, right, front, back, right? Like, and I just want to type those values in. And then I want that to be a drop down list that the user can choose from. And there's workaround ways that we can do that, but they involve a lot of 
crazy gymnastics, I would like to be able to just type the list and it's just there. And then even ideally base formulas off that list. So that's, that's one of my biggies. Um, Kimberly, how about you? We'll put you on the spot. Oh, <laughs> you know, I've been out of production work now for almost six months, so it's it's really hard for me to say. But I go back to uh, when I was a BIM manager, and uh, we had a lot of general notes, and I think a lot of my um, improvements would still happen to be around text uh, and text improvements. Uh, we had some, you know, we had specifications that we were using on drawings and they had to be modified for each project. And I really wanted to just be able to have a different color text within the same text notes. Uh, yeah. Say, you know, so bringing to attention, okay, this needs, it's a decision point and you need to, to pick either mm. this or this. Um, and so I wanted to have like red text in the same text block. I didn't want to have to, you know, make separate text blocks with different colors, you know, and it was just, it really was a mess. Um, and so that has always been kind of my longstanding wish um, is <laughs> just give me the ability to change my text color or highlight or something. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> With this, I want to add one thing that in the electrical panel board scheduling in the previous versions of Revit, whenever there was a blank in the circuit breaker which was not used in the panel, suppose we have a 36 breaker circuit panel, so whenever a phase was empty, so there was, so I expected that there will be a gray color or a cross which has been included in the current version. So I'm very thankful to the Autodesk Revit 2022 fraternity for adding that. And we should mention to the group uh, that there's the Revit Ideas Forum. Kimberly, this is your area, right? Um, it, uh, yeah, you know, they can post their um, their wishes and, and uh, the community will vote them up and they get the attention of Autodesk. They really do. A lot of these features actually started as uh, community ideas. But Kim Kimberly, you, yeah, I, should, I should let you tell us. That's, that's your area. Yeah. No, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, as I said earlier, we had about 40 features uh, in this release that came actually from the Revit ideas. So you can, um, you know, definitely check those out, uh, add your ideas. And then we also have, this is um, something that's fairly new, and let me just pull up the, the link. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, we also have the Revit public roadmap. And so uh, you can go to this public roadmap and you can see at any time what our, um, I just close the window, what our teams are working on. So it kind of gives you a glimpse uh, inside the factory, as we say, uh, in and, um, you know, as to what might be coming out in the next release. Now, of course, we can't make any, you know, guarantees about what may be coming up. Um, but this will at least give you an idea. You can also go on there and vote on the uh, items on the public roadmap, and they're also linked back to the Revit ideas that they came from. So you can uh, go to those Revit ideas and add your votes there as well. And I'm being really technically challenged right now and trying to post a question, yeah, but I don't. You're speaking and posting at the same time. The chat. Yeah, uh, I, I, I got to tell that. you, Kimberly, you should, you should <laughs> capture. I don't know if there's a way to do it in this question panel, but you should capture this whole question panel because there's some great stuff in here and take that back to the factory. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I just to the earlier question about can we start at zero? I have now confirmed that we can. So I'm uh, I don't know if I'm able to share screen, but I'm in Revit uh, right now. If you click numbering, there's an edit button um, and you can tell it what number you want to start at. So. Uh, I put in zero, it worked just fine. So yes, the answer to that question is we can start at zero. So, so uh, after, so just, I want to tell the entire fraternity that has joined this webinar today, that post this webinar, we will be sharing the entire presentation to the respective email IDs of the attendees. And we are highly privileged to have all our guest speakers and esteemed speakers. I believe there are a lot of questions coming, but uh, we will be uh, we but we have answered many of the questions, at least seven and eight of those. So I am very thankful and grateful that we'll be hosting these type of sessions in the future as well. For more communication, you can see the email IDs and phone number on our screen. So you can reach Paul, Kimberly, myself, and Ankit anytime on our respective email IDs with your requirements and suggestions and we'll be happy to cater you in this regard. So with this, we have come to the very fag end of our webinar. 
I would like to thank all of our guest speakers, Mr. Paul, Kimberly, and Ankit, uh, that uh, for your precious time. And I would like to thank all of our guests who have joined this webinar. So uh, we will be continuing hosting this type of webinars. Uh, but uh, for today, I believe we are a short of time and we, we will end this webinar here. But do get back to us on the respective email IDs so that we can help you in future. Thank you. And I think we will also provide the recordings of this webinar so they can go back and yes. check the things. Yes, we, we, can, we will also be providing a recording of this webinar in the, and we will be posting it in the respective uh, with a respective link to the respective email IDs that we have already. So uh, coming to the end of this webinar, I thank everybody once again and thank you and have a great day. All good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I was just trying to scramble through and get a turn that question. Do we have? Wow, there's a lot of questions in there. You can a couple of them. Yeah, I've typed a bunch. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what do we do okay. from here? <laughs> what do we do from here? Yeah, we can, we can end. Because already, uh, yes, there are many questions already that we have answered. So I believe we can end okay. this webinar. And okay. we, we uh, hope that everybody is keeping safe in all the in the in all the part of the world with uh, their families. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank, you. Stay safe all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.